Thank you so much for, for joining us and for letting me interview you about your what sounds like amazing research work. Mm -hmm. So um, if you could just do a quick introduction about who you are uh, and why you're here today, that would be great. Sure, yeah. Um, so I'm a postdoctoral research associate here. Um, my background is in sports science. Uh, I did a PhD in Salford looking at foot biomechanics and the effect of orthotics on muscles and foot motion and the forces acting on the foot. Um, and then I'm on a, a short-term project here with Sharon to um, look at footwear for older adults who play sport. So uh, traditionally, a lot of the footwear research is focused on running footwear and on the younger populations. Um, so we're working with an industry partner to try and develop um, a shoe that will um, be, be useful for older adults playing a variety of sports. And um, one of the sports that they're often um, is popular with older adults is tennis. And um, those sorts of racket sports involve a lot of uh, lateral movements, so changes of direction and lunges and things like that. Um, and so the footwear you need for those kinds of sports are different to what you might need for a running shoe where you're going in a straight line. And so what's great about this facility is this massive force plate that we're sitting on. And so you can move all around it and do lunges and you know, forehands and backhands and things. And you don't have to worry about where your foot is landing. So in a lot of traditional biomechanics labs, you've got just one, small, one or two small squares of a force plate. And you've got to try and hit those as you're walking across them or something. And then so if you're thinking about where your foot's going, you're not necessarily performing the movement as you would sure. normally. So um, when, you, when, you, when you say force plate, can you explain what that is? Oh, yes. Um, so it um, measures the ground reaction force. So when you um, make contact with the ground, you're applying a force. And then with Newton's law, it would have the force back at you. Um, and so uh, that can relate to injury risk. Um, and how much you know, force is going through your uh, bones and soft tissues, um, and then also like the turning effect of the force as well. Um, so, so, so with with the motion capture that you have here, and also the force plates, and the massive space, you can really capture a lot of valuable yeah, data. Yeah. So we, yeah, we combine the motion and the force together to um, get a joint moment. So it's like the turning effect of a force, and um, then have an idea of what your internal structures would have to do to counteract that force and how that might relate to injuries and um, it can be uh, the actual initial impact like an acute injury or just that loading over time as well um, can have a influence on um, injuries risk as well that's really interesting yeah. so yeah obviously yeah it must be applicable to all other types of sports as well uh, but I guess, yes, yeah, tennis, because a lot of people take it up in, in the later. Yeah, so um, we're recruiting for people that play multi-directional sports, which is kind of um, a sort of unusual word. You think, well, what, is that? <laughs> what does that a multi-directional sport mean? It's basically, um, it can be team sports as well. Like, um, you know, basketball, you might be, you're, you're running in one direction and then the, the uh, other team get the ball and you're then having to turn around and run in another direction and you're like dodging around people. So you have that as sort of, short, sharp changes of direction. Yeah, anything well. where there's a big change in vector that you've yeah, got Yeah, to... exactly. So, um, d as the, uh, the sort of research develops, it might be there are specific projects where we'll just be looking at tennis players. But for now, this is like early days. As I said, not much research has been done in the area, so it's a bit exploratory, and it's um, getting a bit of data in this facility, and hopefully that will be, um, like, a chance to showcase the potential of like what this facility can do and highlight the sort of gap in the literature and talk about why more of this research needs to be done and we can compare younger and older adults as well and um, great make some more general sort of statements as well. are you using any of the, of the like vibration um, um, no we're aspects. not in in this project um, I love people in the department are interested <laughs> in that um, with older populations and all sorts of things but I guess um, there aren't that many sports where the floor is moving so. no um, we were thinking about maybe angling it but um, it doesn't actually tilt that much because of the um, need to sort of balance the 
the vibration or something, James will <laughs> tell you more about that. Um, but Sharon's done work with different surfaces and things as well, and interaction between the surface and the footwear. So I think that might be something that she might want to do at some point, is put another thing on top of this fourth plate. Um, it's done stuff with clay before. and um, I see, because this is quite... It's, it's quite hard, hard yeah. yeah. Um, it makes quite a sound when you jump on <laughs> um, so yeah, and potentially making it wet, that could be um, a lot something, because I've been doing some qualitative um, interviews with older adults to see what they actually are reporting that they want from their footwear and if they're having... Yeah, so I imagine like slipping and chipping is a big oh, yeah, thing. Yeah, so there, there will be research done on that in here, yeah, and there's a harness that's going to go on these, um, this, this rig that's around it. Um, so if you do fall, then you, you're caught by the... I see. By the harness, so... We'll, um, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll have a little pan around the, the facility so you can see all the, all the rigging that's up. Yeah, yeah, so there's quite a lot of things there that can, that can happen in here. Um, but yeah, so one of the things that some of these older adults have thought about with their footwear is the grip in relation to different surfaces and if they turn up somewhere to play a match and the court's still a bit wet and the, like, the drainage isn't very good on the AstroTurf or something. So um, the project I'm involved in is like an initial starting point, but... Um, uh, when Sharon and get will like go on further with it, there's definitely other directions you want them to go in that respect. Yeah. How did you get started as a researcher then? Um, so, I, I I like understanding um, the way people move and like interact with their environment, and um, I actually got interested in um, clinical applications after my degree in sports science, and that's what took me to. Uh, Salford, because they've got a very good uh, clinical biomechanics department there and good facilities and equipment. And I just really liked the research process and came across some other sort of methodology issues during my PhD that I wanted to explore a bit more. And so did another postdoc in um, Canada for a bit, looking at wow. some measurement issues there. And um, yeah, then just... Uh, see what was around after that because with early career research you're often on short term contracts <laughs> yeah. Yeah, quite a bit of moving around yeah, just so, going yeah. where the opportunities are I guess yeah um, so it's good for the variety <laughs> so, yeah you don't have to move around a lot <laughs> as tech exo we're a community of like tech and digital people yeah. uh, and we've got a massive sort of skill shortage at the moment uh, and like trying to get young people into the sciences and tech and STEM in general is, is like one of the things we try and encourage. So yeah. if you had any wor words of wisdom for sort of that audience. Um, I think it's important to stay curious and um, I, I do like exploring new ideas and things like that. Um, I think there probably are more opportunities than you think. I, I think while you're doing a PhD in an academia you're sort of very focused by the very nature of it, you're very directed on one specific thing, and it's... Um, yeah, I think when someone says PhD in research, I'm like, oh my God, I couldn't possibly do that. Yeah, but no, it's a lot about just being um, determined and like keeping at it, like things will go wrong, it's inevitable. Um, so don't think like you're the only one and it's a disaster, because <laughs> that's part of the process. Um, but then I think also when you get to the end of it, because you've been so focus on that one thing for so long it's a bit of a panic of like oh what do I do now and so this is a bit of a uh, tendency to, to want to like jump at the first thing that comes along um, but I say maybe just don't panic like there are opportunities <laughs> out there and it might not be in what you initially thought you'd be doing but um, once you start getting your teeth into something I think you can um, find value in a lot of things. What role does like the tech and like digital in general does that play in your research? I imagine because of all the like body tracking and force plates, there's quite a lot of tech involved. Mm -hmm. um, so the advantage of 3D motion capture over two-dimensional video is you can um, you can track what's happening um, more realistically. The issue with like, video is if someone moves slightly out of the plane of the video, then um, it's sort of distorted, whereas if you're capturing from multiple angles, you get a better representation of what's happening. Um, so if you're looking at someone from behind and you're trying to like track their um, 
whether their pelvis is moving up and down and running. If, a, if it's slightly sort of um, off plane, you, you, you might be interpreting like twisting in, as, sure. as like, up and down. So um, yeah, the te technology from that point of 3D motion capture technology is, um, is yeah. Yeah, you have, you have that. that issue with like VR headsets and the occlusion of fingers. So if you're doing that and you're moving your thumb, it's like you don't know where the thumb is moving. The, yeah. the system's just approximating where it thinks the thumb is. It can't actually see it. But obviously, mm -hmm. yeah, with this, this setup, you've got that full 360. Yeah, if you've got multiple, if ideally multiple cameras can see the same thing. If you move and it blocks the view of one camera, hopefully you've got another one to pick it up <laughs> or something. Um, yeah, which is a challenge with all the stuff in here, but I think we've got enough cameras we can figure it out. <laughs> yeah. So you've had to put on the, the suit with all the ping pong balls on. And... Um, I have, yeah. That was the initial pilot we did. Um, it, so some, some systems you just have like um, tape that goes on the back of plastic markers and they go directly on your uh, skin or your clothing. Um, here they have a suit, uh, which is, um, kind of, you kind of feel, yeah, kind of, Futuristic when you're doing, <laughs> like sipping on this black suit as if you're gonna, you know, go on a space station or something. But um, yeah, it, it's one of the things we often say is two people are coming in to do experiments that have never seen it before. It's like this is the same technology they use to do CGI in films, which is something quite cool to think about. Like it's how you like make Lord of the Rings and Star yeah. Wars and stuff like that. So yeah, all we cool. need to do is paint these walls the same colour, like a green, or the same, yeah. have this blue continue oh. around and we can... Yeah. A blue is apparently, it's a good colour for the infrared, apparently, because it doesn't um, interfere with the light too much, because a lot of motion labs are blue. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. Now you know. Yeah. Pro tip, people. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I've been in a gate lab which has a lot of children come in, and I think they've painted fish on some <laughs> bits of it to go with the blue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, make it more friendly. Brilliant. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming okay, in. Okay, no worries. You're welcome. Uh, pleasure to speak to you. And yeah, um, you we, too. We'll, we'll obviously put some videos of your research and we'll, yeah. we'll follow you as, as you come up with stuff Great. throughout Sounds the year. Sounds good. So, how long is this research? Uh, um, so, this project is um, going to sort of wind up in the summer. So we're going to have, hopefully, all being well with recruitment, an intense week of testing in here. And then. Um, analyzing and writing up the data and then use that as sort of um, information to feed a larger grant or to approach other industry partners to work with. So, Brilliant. Look forward to the output of that. Yeah. Oh, there's Sharon. You're right. Oh, uh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Do what yeah, everyone else So that's something that often happens with motion capture. The, um, you just walk outside with the suit. Yeah, not, <laughs> not so much with the suit, but with um, other systems where they are just the markers and there's so many of them that go on you, you kind of forget them. <laughs> oh, walking in a 